Yep. So, good afternoon, everybody, for the last session of today, of the first Great Con today. Uh, today, it will be about Grails 3 and tips and tricks from Grails 3 I will be showing. Um, first, a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Hubert Kleinik, in Clifford, the Netherlands. Uh, my nickname or alias is called Mr. Haki, and that's also what I use for my Twitter and for my blog posts and website and uh, the things like that. So, on my Blog, you can find all kinds of posts like about Grails, about Groovy, Spock, and other stuff. And this session also will be a lot of code showing from the blog posts. And just uh, a lot of tips and tricks you can hopefully use in your daily life if you use Grails. Uh, to have a bit of structure, I want to show some things that, uh, that you can do with the command line interface of Grails. So the interactive shell that's available. Also with Grails 3, uh, the spring uh, boot uh, underneath uh, Grails 3 is very important actually. And if you only develop developing Grails applications, you might not know what Spring Boot has to offer for you. So I also want to dive into that, uh, that part of Grails, the Spring Boot part of it. And let's, uh, let's see what, uh, what we can learn from that and what we can use in our applications. Also going to look at some of the configuration options. Most of them are also from the Spring Boot part actually. Uh, different ways how you can configure application, how you can have configurations for different environments, for example. Uh, a short thing about how to use Grails in IDEA, but that's really, really short. Uh, some logging and looking at some controller functions, how to create group surf pages, for example, and some miscellaneous stuff at the end if we have time left. So let's see what happens. That's actually the end of the presentation, so it's time to go to command line screen. Is this... Readable. Is it too small? Let's make it a bit. So let's go to a demo directory in this case. So and if you have installed Grails and you type in Grails like this, uh, you start an interactive mode. So this is the command line interface from Grails um, to, to do certain stuff. But before we start, let's create an application. And if you don't know in Grails, we have this uh, since Grails 3, it's actually we have profiles we can use to start an application. Now those profiles are presets for certain things we want to use our application for. So if we want to know which profiles are available, we have this list profiles command we can use. Um, and this is really a starting, port for starting point for creating your Grails application uh, if you want to. So you have this available profiles and if you want to know more about a certain profile, there's this profile info command as well. So we can say, I want to know more about the React profile. And info. And you can see it provides certain commands for us uh, that are available in this profile. So when I create an application using this profile, I get this command uh, for free and can use them. And at the bottom, there's something called features. And features is something we can add to the application that's generated. Uh, using a comma, comma separated list. So in this case, we're going to make a new Grails application. So this create app. We're going to use profile uh, React in this case. Then we can add features to it. For example, security. And let's add Neo4G. And then we also still have to provide a name for that application as well. Um, we call it the React app. So Grills now creates this application for me. It creates the directories for it and the correct structure so I can use it. And also at the end, we have this kind of a readme on how to work with your application if you want uh, to see how it works. And if I open the directory structure, you can see we have a server, we have a client part, and everything is available there. But there's also something else. If you want to do it via the browser, for example, there's the start.spring.io, which is from Spring, but there's also start.grills.org, which is also a website where you can just use multi uh, select boxes and say, okay, which kind of features I want to use, uh, which kind of profiles I want to use that's available. Uh, we can see the same thing here. So instead of using the command line list profiles and profile info and create app with the profile options, you can also still use this website as a starting point for your, your application. And it will generate a project, which is a zip file. You can download it and then unzip it, and you're ready to go, actually. Um, the nice thing is, even you can use curl commands for it as well. If you know the correct parameters you, wanna, you have to provide for it, then you can use curl to download that as well, which can be quite powerful. Um, <coughs> if we open up, uh, let's say, this 
directory, our command line interface. And we type in help, you can see all the commands that are available. Um, if you're in this interface, you want to use, for example, some of the uh, commands from your operating system, you can also use the exclamation mark and just type those commands and those will be executed as well. So you're still in this in interactive shell. And if you use this exclamation mark before your commands, you can still uh, execute them without leaving the, uh, the shell in this case. And also, since Grails 3, we are using Gradle as a build system. Um, and if you want to use Gradle as a build system from the command line shell, there's also this Gradle command available. So I can ask for all the tasks that are available in Gradle. And it will show me all the tasks that are available if I execute them as a Gradle command. So I have a choice to either run Gradle from the command line without the Grails uh, interactive shell, or when I'm in this interactive shell, I can also still invoke all the Gradle tasks if I want to. If you want to change the Gradle version that's available, you can also define an environment variable, which is called Grails underscore Gradle underscore home. And let's say it's probably somewhere on my system here. In this case, one of the use, for example, version 3.4 instead of the default 3.4.1 that's included. So when I now do Gradle version, it should give me the 3.4 version. Ah, oh, the internet. So it says welcome Gradle 3.4. So either way, you can upgrade your Gradle version from the command line shell, so you even could use Gradle 3.5, for example, or you can downgrade it, whatever you want to do with it. Um, also, Gradle provides some extra tasks that are not available from Grails itself. So, for example, if you want to compile the Groovy server pages in your project, you can use the Compile Groovy Pages option. And there's also something called Asset Compile, so all the assets in your application could be already pre-compiled for you. Uh, I'm mistyping something, or I'm using the wrong Gradle version. Ah. Let's just clear the, um, let's do it from here. So we have this assets compile option, and let's see if that first works. Wow, it's well, almost the evening, right? And it's already done. Um, so let's first clean so it shows it works. But at least it shows you can all you also uh, invoke all the uh, extra tasks that are added, tasks that are added by Gradle to the build instead of all the standard Grails uh, tasks that are available. So if we have this project, uh, let's open it in. IntelliJ, so there we go, Ooh. oh, I've already opened it, so that makes it easier. Uh, let's close first and start fresh. Uh, what I want to show is um, the way you build your application in Gradle, normally you create a war file, which can be a runnable war file, so Either way, you deploy to a Tomcat, for example, as a uh, uh, Java EA container. Uh, but also, if you have this um, uh, war file, you can also run it as Java minus jar followed by the war, uh, war file. And let's make this a bit bigger. So, if it is built great. But we also can deploy it as a jar file, and that's not that difficult. We only have to disable the plugin, the war plugin that's available. So when we go to the command line and I say now Gradle build, it will generate a jar file instead of the war file. And the nice thing with the jar file that we can do nice stuff, which I will show later on, but still I can, for example, say build lips, and there's this jar file, and this is the way I can start my application, which can be really useful, for example, in a Docker environment, where you just have this jar file, have the Docker container, a Docker image built from it, and start the container quite easily uh, this way. Somehow my system this m uh, morning didn't want to do the grills uh, stuff that fast anymore, but or it's maybe the end of the day. 
And I can also already start something else. Uh, because Grails 3 is built on Spring Boot, we can use some of the Spring Boot uh, features as well in our Grails applications. And one of the things we can do, for example, there's this Spring Boot extension for our build file. And we can say executable is true, which will generate an executable jar file. So let's rebuild it. And that means that this is a shell. Uh, instead of using the Java uh, hyphen jar followed by the jar fa file itself, we can just execute the jar file. So let's build again our application. And also show, for example, the head of our build file. You can now see, instead of class files, which you might expect, or binary stuff, that's the first thing that starts with is a startup script that can be used. And when we go to the directory, I can just say, run it as a shell. So also in the case when you want to deploy this to Docker, it's really quite powerful to do. It's just uh, an executable and that can be run as like a shell script. Um, there's also other things we can define on it. And one of the things we can define on it is the embedded uh, launch script properties. And one of the things we can define this mode, the mode service. So instead of, let's go to the directory and rebuild again, because I made a change here. And then go to build. And now it's actually kind of a Linux service, which you can run any way you like in an init level, or whatever you want to do it. Uh, so you have different options here to have uh, how you build your jar file as compared to previous uh, Grails versions. And all because it's based on Spring Boot. We all, uh, in this case, I'm just using Spring Boot stuff. So it might be a good idea if you're doing Grails 3 application also to look at Spring Boot documentation as well, because there are a lot of things there that can be really useful in your day-to-day -day life. Um, let's go back to our application. Also, one of the things I like to do is when I do the development of a Quill Studio application, <coughs> we have this boot run the task in our Cradle build script, and we can configure certain things on it. And one of the things that are, is already configured is a Java system property that makes the output colorful, actually, which is nice, of course, if you're doing the development stuff. But if you use Gradle and you want to provide system properties to your running Girls application, which you might want to do something like uh, skipping the bootstrap stuff, for example. So you can just say, and then do boot run. So when I pro provide this system property, grills.bootstrap.skip is true, then any bootstrap class in my application is not executed, and uh, it's skipped. If I leave it out, it will not be skipped, of course. But this variable will not be passed into the boot run task as is, because it's uh, eaten up by the Gradle process and it's not passed on by to the task we want to uh, invoke. But we can change that. There's always the system properties uh, method available in the boot run task, and we can say system.properties. So just pass on everything that's passed on the command line, the system property, and pass it on to our boot run task, and then it's available in the Grails application. So then we can use it. Um, <coughs> also, if we look at the configuration of our Grails application, uh, if you have done Spring Boot before, you know there's always this nice, nice. there's always a banner showing. If you start an application, it has this uh, ASCII art kind of a banner available. And Grails does not by default. But if I go, where to go, go, go. Uh, there it is. <coughs> There's this property in our configuration spring main banner mode off. Well, let's make this into console and see what happens. And now it's waiting. I don't know why, but. This was not the case yesterday. Come on, you can do it. There you go. Wow. 
that's a banner. <laughs> so it's in there, but it's kind of hidden nowadays. Uh, if you want to provide your own banner, that's of course also possible. Uh, if in the class path there's a file called grills-banner.txt, it will use that file instead of the one you see here. So it's possible to override this nice banner in, the, in your application and have a different one if you want to. Um, also, let's add some uh, logging to the startup, which we, for example, we can see which uh, PID is used for the application and which server port is used, we can see at the end, but the PID can be useful as well. So when we go to the application, uh, there it is. And we want to show some more information. Um, we can have a custom Grills app for that. So let's say we have a custom Grills app that extends the Grills default application. And we want to have all the constructors from the Grills application. Using this uh, inherit constructors annotation, it will automatically have an implementation for all the constructors from actually the Grills app. And I also have, oh, need to override the method uh, log startup info and I can even check if there's an application log debug enabled and I can say for example application log debug using grills uh, grills version is that something that would yeah that should work and now when I go to my login configuration this is just a default login configuration in, uh, in the Grills 3 application. There's a lot of stuff here that does all the coloring, for example. In the end, it defines the type of logging that's already there. Uh, by default, it uses the error logging level, so only errors are shown. And if we want to change it, for example, here we can say info, and then we can see more info, uh, more uh, data. But we can also have specific logger implementations as well. So we have this logger, and I want to enable for the application debug mode because hopefully we will see some mo something more. There it is. <coughs> but also if you want to, for example, have this application and you have these Grails artifacts like controllers, services and stuff like that, and you want to have this, the, those as well being locked in the, in the application, in the output, there's always a thing in Grails that, that's prefixed with grills.app. So if you want to do something with controllers, and it can be followed by your own class name or just use the package name. It has to be prefixed with grills.app. That's something that's being changed in the next version of Grills. So in Grills 3.3, that's removed, that restriction actually. So if you're going to make a change and you're going to upgrade from a Grills 3 to a Grills 3.3 application, just go to the log files and the log configuration and see what needs to be changed there. So hopefully the application starts up a bit quicker this time. <coughs> Otherwise it's just a slowdown for us. And it's not slower because of the banner, but as you might expect, but even without the banner, it's on my machine now slow today. Come on. So it's a bit because of the large font size, but if you look here, for example, starting boop, 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 application, that's the machine name with the PID number that's available here. So this is actually from the Spring Boot underneath the Grills application that's displaying it. Uh, there's also this running with Spring Boot, and I'm not seeing my message. Why not? I did. So, ah, uh, no, you're right. <laughs> I created my custom grills, but I didn't use it yet, so. Very good. Uh, so let's say I have my new custom Grills app, and this is still the application as a parameter. And I can say app. it now will use my new one. And because it's really slow, I want to do some stuff more here before I continue. So there's this um, 
add listeners met method available on our girls application. And there we can add some custom listeners that are invoked dur during startup of our girls application. So we already noticed that we have this PID in the output of the, the logging actually, but it could also be nice to have that on a file, for example, if you want to have uh, some kind of process that checks the PID uh, of your application. Uh, it needs to read in a file, for example, in a scripting environment and do things based on that uh, value. And that's available for us as well. So there's this uh, add listeners. There's this new application pit file writer available. And it has certain uh, constructor arguments which can change. So we can, for example, uh, set the file name or set a real file available. If we leave to the default in the root of our project, it will generate something called application.pid, which will have the contents the PID of our started application. And there's also an embedded server port file writer. What's in the name? That's doing exactly what it says here. So, and now it's also generating the port, our application starts up and saves that port number in a file and it can also be used, for example, in a scripting environment. So let's start and it takes about 40 seconds. Come on. I have the feeling it's getting slower every minute I'm starting it. <laughs> so now I have my spring thing back. I <coughs> so it's starting up. Ah, there's my message so it says using grills with the version. So that was the custom startup info logging I created. Now it's starting and if I go to the directory, at least we have this application file here already, which contains the value of our uh, process number. Let's see if it's, it should also give me the other one, application.port, which contains the value of the port number the application started in. So also just borrowing from what Spring Boot offers us, we can have this same kind of functionality in, in our Grills application. Also, if you have uh, Spring Boot underneath, there's something called Spring Boot Actuator available in the Spring Boot environment. And if you look at, for example, our build file and see, look, take a look at all the dependencies that are defined for application, one of them is Spring Boot Starter Actuator, which actually adds something like endpoints to application to see the health of our application, to have some info available. A uh, lot of things that can be really useful if you need to monitor your Grails application. But by default, it's off. So let's turn this on first. There's this endpoints enabled property in the, in the configuration actually. So when I turn this to true, I will now have extra endpoints available, for example, to have uh, insight in uh, system properties, environment variables. So you have to be careful with this and you can really fine tune it and uh, uh, have them uh, authorized, for example, that first you need to have an authorization on that endpoint before you see the information. But for now, it's okay for this demo just to have them all open. Why not? And when we go to our Grills application, let's go back to our old stuff. So we have this Grills up uh, and then the, the official run command. What we can do in this thing, uh, let's overwrite the do with spring method. So our application extends Grails auto configuration and Grails auto configuration has a lot of uh, methods that allow us to really reconfigure uh, our application. And one of the things we can do with do with Spring is actually the old bean builder kind of interface you had to define beans in your application. So to make it even look like it, let's call it beans and then just return the beans for it. Uh, what I can do, for example, uh, the things that are available with the endpoints enabled, um, one of the default ones is there's a disk space um, health in indicator. And that's really uh, something that can be used, for example, that applications should uh, have enough disk space available when it starts uh, or when it's running and when the certain threshold is being uh, set. And the disk space is lower than the threshold, the application should say, okay, there's a warning or the status cannot be uh, determined uh, again. We can configure that as well, but we can also have custom, uh, for example, a data source 
health indicator, which tells something about is the database running and is it okay. In this case, I'm just defining a new Spring Bean. It's just like the old syntax with the old Grails applications, which has this kind of name, data source health indicator, and it has a type data source health indicator, and it needs a data source. So this data source value is the Spring Bean data source, which is automatically in our Spring context added by Grills. And I also want to have a custom health check. You can also write your own health checks if you want to. So let's create one. In this case, source main. Let's create a Groovy class. Custom health check. That one extends the abstract health indicator. That's the easiest way to implement your own health check. You need to implement one method to health check, which has an argument, which is a builder interface. Uh, so the builder pattern comes back here, so we have this builder. And there are different methods here on the builder. One of them is up, there's down, down with an exception, so you can have a certain uh, exception uh, thrown uh, and then displayed uh, on the health endpoint. There's out of service status and a lot of other things you can do. In this case, I will just say it's up and then it's okay. This it's defined here as custom health check, so it should be all fine now. Then it's starting. Mm. Actually, I can add some more information as well. Uh, let's go, let's start this and then we see the result at the end. One of the things you might want to have in your application is uh, one of the endpoints you have here um, is an info endpoint. So this Spring Boot actuator dependency, that's an info endpoint. So if we do slash info, it displays some information about the application. And you might want to have, for example, your Git information in there, like the commit ID. So you have this correct versioning of your application available in an info endpoint. It can be used. And to add that, there's actually a Gradle plugin for that. So if you go to the plugins.gradle.org website and you look for the Gradle Git properties plugin, what is needed by the Spring Boot Actuator uh, actually code is there should be a git.properties file in the class path. If that file is there, it will show it as in the, at the info endpoint. And this plugin will create that file for you. So you don't have to write any code yourself to make that happen. So that's nice. Let's copy paste that into our build file. That's the first thing we need to do. Then we need to apply the plugin. Let's also copy paste it from the website. And just by applying this plugin to our build file, automatically the git.proty file will be generated if our project is a git uh, project, of course. Otherwise, it will not work. And also in the info endpoint, I want to have some more information as well. And let's say I have this uh, doo -doo 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 application file here. And any property in your configuration that says info.app. whatever follows after that will also be added to the endpoint, the info endpoint I will show <laughs> shortly. So let's do something here. We can have multiple configuration files. Also the old groovy way of defining your properties. So there's also application.groovy. Can be used just beside next to the JAML implementation. So let's say I want to have this by property, so it's or maybe even started by, and then look at a system property use.name. So this should also be part of my endpoint. Let's stop and restart. So a lot of things happen now because starting takes so long. Um, <coughs> I have added an info endpoint to my git properties. I have added uh, a custom property. Ah, it's not in the... So add all the stuff here. Uh, it was not a... There we go. It's just for demo purposes, right? <coughs> so I added the grid properties. I added the custom uh, info uh, property. Uh, it's called started by. And also the health Endpoint should have display should display <coughs> something about the database that started. In this case, the H2 database automatically part of Grills, and it should have my custom health check as well. So let's hope that everything works. Ok. 
Come on. So it started. Start up a new console in this case uh, using HTTP Pi, which is just a curl kind of client to invoke my endpoints. And I can say, for example, health. And there it shows. It shows my custom health check, which says status up because my implementation was very dumb, just return to up value. But you can write your own implementation, for example, check text if a remote connection is available, uh, available if that's needed by your application. And if it's not, you can say it's down or it's unavailable out of service, and you can have different uh, statuses here. Also, the data source is now available. You can see the kind of database that's used uh, and also that it's running. And also here we have this disk space that's automatically added. I didn't do have to do anything for it. That's automatically added by the Spring Boot actuator dependency itself. And the overall status, because all these three health indicators have the status up, is also up. So if you have a monitoring system that needs to check if your application is still running, it could just go to this health endpoint, parse it and look for the status field in the JSON response, and if it's up, you can give it a green light, and otherwise maybe another action needs to be taken. So instead of health, we also have this info, and that hopefully shows also the things I needed to do show. So we have this app, the Grills version name, started by the one that I just added in the application.groovy file, actually. Is shown here with the value Mr. Haki, which is the system properties value I have on my machine. And also the Git information is also shown here. So I can just see, okay, the version that's now running uh, was uh, from Git commit ID to FF and the rest you can see here, and also the time that was available. Yeah. Yeah, one is one. So actually what happens, uh, the Spring Boot actuator looks for a file called git.properties, and I think we can even look it up to see what is generated. And I think it's in here, there it is. Generates this file, and that is used in the info endpoint to show information. And I think you can even configure the info endpoint to show more information from this file than just the simple summary we saw earlier. So. so another thing I want to show is that if we use Grail 3 and the underlying Spring Boot system, that configuring every application, um, the values of your configuration can also be different. And for example, we can have random values for configuration uh, properties. So let's try and see if that works. I will stop this one. So we have our application here, and I want to show it using also another thing. Um, <coughs> if we have a component in our sp actually Spring Bean context, so actually in our Grails context, and that component implements the command line runner interface, that component is executed automatically at startup time. So let's say I want to have a custom of our configuration, lower component, and it implements command line runner. I need to implement the method. There's one method I need to implement in this case, it's the run method. Um, so what I want to do is have some properties here. One of them is a password. One of them is a random integer, for example. <coughs> and the values should be coming from the configuration of our application. So let's add that here. So I can say, for example, uh, in this case, this a, let's call it the great conf um, password. And great conf, um, let's call it number. <coughs> Just here, I want to do a print line of all that information. So let's have a couple of dashes before we show something. And then we can say password is password. And number is number. <coughs> so in this case, I'm using this syntax. And I'm referring to actually values from our application or yeah, application configuration. So I want to open our application configuration. I can just say great conf, and then we have this password, and we had the, mm. just have a look for it, random integer. And to get these random values, we can just say random password, and random 
int, and we can even give a range of where the random value should be coming from. So, for example, everything between 40 and 70 should be assigned to this configuration properties. And it should be shown when we start our application. I call it, yep, yeah. You're still awake, I'm not that awake, apparently. So, let's start the application again. And now it should show on the console when I start a lot of dashes and then the values of these random properties. Does that work? No, yeah, I didn't find the bean yet before we wait. So we have now defined a class, but it's not in the context yet. <gasps> and then we have this. There's a lot of things going wrong here. So, and also make it available as a bean. Well, this should do it. <laughs> Did I also change it here? Greatconf.password.number and I'm referring to greatconf.password.number. That should be okay, hopefully. <laughs> Let's start and wait. <coughs> well, it starts, I can already explain that if uh, all the configuration properties we have here, we can define in this application.jml file, and application.groovy file, application.property file. All is okay and will be picked up automatically by your Grails application. Uh, but if you have, for example, a development environment, which we have in the Grails application, and a production environment and test environment, you can also do an application-test.jml or those properties, or an application-production uh, implement values. Whoop. So I did a space. There's a space problem here. Yep. I don't know why, but it's not allowed to have a space after the comma. Let's start again. <coughs> so we have these properties. Where the files where the properties are stored can be different. So we can have for each environment a different file. But also we have this property, uh, configuration property, create conf dot password or dot number. Or we can have even a message, for example, which has a default value. Uh, if we want to change the values, we can also set them via either system properties. So we can say minus capital D, and then we say greatconf.message followed by a value when we start our application, and it will automatically overwrite the value that's in these files. Also, we can use environment variables for it, which in the case of a Docker environment is really useful because you have, can have environment vari variables like greatconf, un greatconf underscore message, give it a value and that will automatically be picked up and overwrite the value in this application gemmel file for us. It started and, oh, there it is. It also shows my random numbers. That's nice that it works. Um, the last, sorry? Uh, yeah, it does, <laughs> but yeah. Um, one final thing, it's, uh, there's also a special environment variable available that's called spring underscore application underscore JSON, which you can have a JSON value, and that can also set uh, uh, configuration properties for your application as well. So if you want to configure your application in different ways, you have to really look at spring boot documentation because there are about 20 ways, I guess, where the thing can be overridden. So you're very flexible on how you configure your application in, uh, in Grails. So when I go to my... IntelliJ IDE. Uh, you might have noticed that I still have this project kind of view here, and it also has a Grails view still, but it's kind of hidden. So if you go here and you click Grails, it shows my Grails structure actually from a Grails application, which you had in the past before <coughs> Grails 3 actually was this the default view for your Grails application in IntelliJ. So we have this controller, the main class is scepter, plugins, and there's also initialization, which contains my application dot groovy file and all the stuff that's available here. So you still, it's, it's there, but you still have to activate it. Uh, let's create a simple controller. Let's call it uh, sample. So this will create my sample controller. In, let's also show. Oh, oh, go back. There it is. And to create a view for this, uh, you can 
row. It, I think it's right click, but also it's done there. I use also ways to alt enter toots. If you click on it, you get this context view on certain actions that can be executed. And one of them is create a view. So that's an easy way to create a view for your method. And now I have in my views uh, folder, the sample folder has this index GSP available. Let's add uh, the layout. So it looks nice. Um, Main. So now when I run this application, it will automatically show my, uh, my view. <coughs> and when I have, for example, in my controller, uh, this index, so let's say I have a model and one of the model's properties is a message and it has some almost out of pizza. So this is an HTML string which could be displayed on my uh, view. So that's quite easy to do, of course. I can just say message. Is it started yet? Oh, oh no. Come on. Almost there. So since I think a couple of Grails versions ago, the defaults uh, for uh, outputting those kind of HTML uh, strings is that it's being escaped, just for safety reasons. So when I open this application, for sample controller, uh, come on, this should be picked up. Why is it not showing my message? Could it be simpler? Um, I don't want to restart. Come on. <laughs> Probably have to. Let's type it too fast. It's normally if you have this controller method, it returns uh, a map. It's automatically the model. It's really a shortcut for render, view, index, model, then whatever, but that should work. Anyhow, let's continue something else. So let's say I have a method that throws an exception. In Grails, you can have uh, that exception handled in your controller by a handle exception method. So let's say there is this new exception. Let's create an exception class as well. Extends, uh, exception, there we go. Also, I'm using inherit constructors again because an exception class already has four constructors you have to implement. Makes it and if I want to handle this exception, you can uh, handle the exception, uh, let uh, Grails handle the exception, for example. But if I want to do something special with it in this controller, because it's locally an exception for this controller class, I can also say, okay, there's a handle serve exception method. And the type of the argument of this method defines how to handle the exception, actually. So when there's a method in my controller class with an argument that is the same exception type that can be thrown there, then I can have my own custom error stuff, for example, here, and then display it to the user. Now, hopefully, we start, ah, there we go. So what happened, our HTML, it's totally escaped, um, but I want to have this in bold because it's really almost time. And then to have this in bold, there's always a way to do it and have the raw method available. So in this case, I just want to have this raw HTML. I know what I'm doing. So now it's almost time for pizza. And I think it's time for pizza. So I want to finish up to for this one. Um, thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the day and tomorrow. Thank you.